Nice. And we're back, getting ready for the final series of the day. But first, I gotta say it one more time. Wild card! 2-0, Rafa. Our expectations are completely shattered. This team is blowing us away. Stack Their fan base baby. is Stack. so vocal and loud, and they are living up to the hype. I'm, I, I have already tweeted it. I think through sheer determination, Wildcard has now earned the respect not just as the best provisional team, I think they are a top team in Challengers League. Like, you don't just take a 2-0 sweep off of Cloud9 Challengers yeah. and still not get called a top team. Like, I, yeah. I think I think if we don't do that, we are disrespecting Wildcard at this point and not being real here. Like, people can say... Cloud9 too. Yeah, I mean, like, they, yeah. we can say that uh, Cloud9 should have done this, should have done this. They were egoing on Wildcard. I mean, like, yes, that's true, but also Wildcard rose above to those expectations, right? So, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not much else to say other than Wildcard are absolutely earning their keep at the top of the standings. And uh, that's impressive, to say the least. Now, beat down, let's bring our attention to the next series because we got one more ahead of us. And uh, they have been... I know we've said this a couple times now. We're going to say it again because it's it's true this time. They've been bangers. Four games in a row of just insane gameplay. We have been blessed today with some of the most fun League of Legends that I've seen in a while. I agree, and I'm I'm crossing my fingers at the moment. I hope you guys are too, that we can just keep this going. Because we oh, got yeah. one more series left, and it is an exciting one for a lot of reasons. We got Cincinnati Fear versus Evil Genius Challengers. And I mean, mm -hmm. Cincinnati, we talk about top provisional teams. At the moment, Cincinnati Fear are definitely in that conversation for what an insane mm -hmm. start they had to our spring split here and how good they have looked so far. The roster of, unfortunately, we don't have photos of them. I, one oh, day. One day, we're going to have photos of every player. It's going to look amazing. But this team has kind of similar to Wild Card, come out the gate swinging as a provisional team without LCS org backing, and they are looking good doing it. Rafa, I think in particular, the some of the players that I want to highlight here, Faisal and Perry, not only because of their performances individually, but the fact that they're going up against their old yep. org. Like, Faisal and Perry are both coming in yeah. from the Evil Geniuses That's ecosystem right. to That's, Cincinnati Fear. That's right. They were in the pipeline. They were on the Prodigy's roster last year, so Evil Geniuses had more than uh, enough time to be able to get them uh, accumulated or acclimated to the system, but they chose Shaden and Soul instead. So mm -hmm. Perry and Faisal, for them, this is a statement game for them to say, hey, you should have picked us, you know, like you made the wrong choice. And as we take a look at some of the gameplay here, you can see that they're playing still at a level, I would even argue better than we last saw them, uh, Evil Geniuses, Prodigies. I think that Faisal and Perry are showing up here Absolutely. and they're definitely trying to prove something. And I think that they're going to want to prove it even more now up against their old org. Yeah, and I think... I mean, it's going to be really exciting because, again, it's that choice that, hey, we pick these two over you. And the fact that we've seen Faisal and Perry manage to improve themselves over time. I mean, Faisal is just looking better and better as time goes on. Perry mm. managed to sub for Dignitas last year in Proving Grounds in summer and managed to make it to second place. These are players who are still who have been still continuously rising in their abilities. And I think this is could be a culmination of that where we start to see, okay, the, you, it, it will really feel good, I think, for them just to be able to beat that old organ. Say, like you said, Mark, you should have picked me it's the energy and the vibes that we're getting from uh perry and faisal i mean it, whenever you're going up against an org that used to have you in their pipeline and then i don't want to say they gave up on you but they chose others over you i mean now this is what we get to see and right now evil geniuses challengers i mean they've had a pretty good reason for picking up shaden and soul in this new yeah roster. shaden is nuts that, like let's be that, real Oh, he's insane. I We're going to have a whole thing about this at the end of the week here of like the top performer it's, so it's far. It, guys. Spoiler, Shaden's up there. Uh, but it's also important to know here because yes, Soul Shaden, very exciting. We're going to keep our attention on them going forward Say in this it. matchup. But Ryoma is in, Let's baby! Go! He has made the trek from Oceania. Visa Hell is a thing of the past. And Ryoma has arrived, the starting mid laner for Evil Geniuses Challengers. And one of the things that we want to preface for Ryoma is the last time we saw him on the big stage, unfortunately for him, it was a defeat against 100 Thieves challenge, uh, 
or Hunter Thieves Academy back in spring mm -hmm. proving grounds. But for Ryoma fans, long, near, and dear, they know that at the peak of Ryoma's career, he has pulled off immaculate and miraculous plays. Obviously, a sad ending here in spring, but when we go back to summer of 2021, this is where 100 Thieves picked up their first Proving Grounds victory off the back of an immaculate shockwave combo from Ryoma. And then afterwards, that is where Ryoma got picked up for Golden Guardians Challengers going into the spring season. And even though they only ended up in third place, they had a strong start and they had a strong season overall one of the coolest things about Ryoma as a player is moments like that that game five in that summer 2021 series or on a shockwave if you whiff that game's over <laughs> and it's it's sometimes very scary to actually be the one to start the combo with that if you're not confident you have the orn thinking all right well let's like have somebody else do it first but Ryoma's the type of player who says no I'll do it I'll be the one to step up in these big pressure moments and make the play happen. And I think that that's one thing that not every young player has. You know, that's something that you kind of have to develop, be done. You got to get that confidence over time. Absolutely. And Ryoma has that one in spades. And it's been, I mean, really, we've been really anticipatory because of the fact that he's been in Visa Hell, like you said. And he's a player who we know has had some insane highs. We didn't even get to see him last summer due to some, I mean, I won't get into it, but it was just unlucky circumstances. And it's exciting to see his return on this stage now here in the mm -hmm. Challengers League, especially for a team this good. Because, I mean, we talked about it. Robbie Bob, shout out to him for being able to sub it. Uh, for the time being, and now Ryoma being here, a player who we're all excited about on the broadcast team. Like, let's be real. Mm -hmm. How is he going to be able to fit into this roster? Spoiler alert, it's probably going to be really well. <laughs> we we hope so. We imagine so, because so far it's been the Shaden show. This yeah. It's been a team that just plays around their jungler, let Shaden carry, and then they draft around that. With Ryoma, will that remain the same? Uh, because on the opposite side, when we look at uh, Cincinnati Fear, oftentimes it's Faisal. It's the top half of the map that we're looking yeah. towards to carry and to be that firepower in the game against Seoul. That's a tough ask for Faisal. So with that said, expectation set. I'm going to pass it over to Rafa and B-Down because I'm here and pick. Ban is ready for game number one. And it's our last series of the day beat down. So, you know what, Time everyone, flies, man. Get, in, get in one last stretch because we're going to go on a trip. Not necessarily in a favorite rocket ship, of course, but, you know, uh, a type of rocket ship where we get to cruise along the horizon of Runeterra and see these two teams duke it out. As we kind of already highlighted before, uh, yes, Cincinnati Fear have some exciting pieces built around them. Obviously, Perry and Faisal going up in their org is... You know, an awesome storyline to follow. Now, the expected outcome should be Evil Geniuses Challengers favored. We did just see a series where we were very adamant that Cloud9 were favored against Wildcard. So it's not like, you know, me, you know, surprises cannot happen. Uh, and if, if anything, if anything that you can attack the, the weaknesses of, we, we know that Ryoma is a fantastic player. But we don't know how long he's been back in uh and we don't know how long he's yeah. been scrimming with the team and i think for the most part if evil geniuses just want to get ryoma accustomed real quick not like it should take that much time is just repeat what the strategy they ran when robbie bob was in the squad just put ryoma on mid laners that create space and create opportunities for shaden to rack up kills so that shaden can do his thing right and that's the thing that's it i think very exciting about the ryoma edition because the fact is Evil Geniuses against Convention have been playing towards these carry junglers where, I mean, one, with a player like Shaden, of course you can make it work, but overall, they're making it happen so that they can enable Shaden as best as possible. So you have Ryoma, who certainly will be able to play this style if need be, but can also play things like the Rise, which is available, by the way, and a lot of other mages like we saw in the replays that you gathered for us, Mark. So. I think this opens up options for evil geniuses, and I think that makes them an even more dangerous team as a result. The fact that they could play for their laners, they could play for bot lane, yeah. they could play for jungle, and it makes them a little harder to predict, especially when you have a top laner who's willing to play Sejuani, because if you do your research, you realize that might not be a shaded pick. That's right. This Sejuani is a flex pick for evil geniuses challengers, and we know not just from obviously the game that we saw where Soul flexed the Sejuani top lane and Shaden took another jungle carry pick for himself. We've also seen Soul 
on Proving Grounds alive during last year, played the 1v1 right. matchup of Sejuani into Surti. So Soul very experienced around uh, this match. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Now that's a Manui special if I've ever seen one. A Tristana lock in, assuming that should be Ash support for Trevor. I mean, if you want to spice up the firepower and, you know, throw something Evil Genius at Challenger's way in terms of unexpected, that's one way to do it. For sure, and I'm interested to see what the support pick is going to be, and it's going to be right away, no Hezzy, the uh, Heimerdinger lock-in, because Karma is taken out, of course, so no it's not going to be as like <laughs> as powerful, as potent as the Karma for Smoothie, uh, as lane dominant, but you're still going to have a lot of range, a lot of poke, but the interesting thing is that, I mean, with this Tristana, you have a lot of all-in potential and a good amount of range poke with the Ash. So I think the laning phase is going to be very interesting here for in this matchup because I imagine Perry is going to also be very interested in heading towards that bot lane and having the influence because otherwise, mobility is going to be a problem. And looking towards the rest of the draft here, you can see things like Faisal's Jax are taken out of the picture. Could very easily be yet another top lane ban come yeah. through here. Or honestly, I think it's probably just going to be you ban top laners for Evil Genius Challengers, and you just pick uh, a mid laner on four like Rise because like I mean, it's still really strong on this patch. It's still up and available. And then you give Shaden or Soul, depending on what they're thinking, that final pick. That's right. I I'm in the same wheel boat as you are, beat. I think a rise pick is in the works for Mr. Tommy Lay on his debut arrival with the Evil Geniuses Challengers. Cincinnati Fear going through their notes and thinking, okay, well, do we want to take away any mid lane bands or do we have an answer already prepared for yeah. what they, I mean, because if, if you go through even not just, you know, last season, but if you look at Rayoma's career, his yeah. career stats yep. rises his most pick 38 or 38 or 39 times and then all the other picks it comes down to like you know mid 20s uh and then a lot of other tens and uh single digits but man like i if it's not rise then i'm not sure what else. whoa whoa okay wow. they are they are saving the counter pick for the very last part of draft phase so wukong Going over to Shaden, as you called it, uh, it's a blind pick Sejuani for Soul. Yeah, and I think the Camille ban is probably what would have made it, uh, what kind of made, tipped me off, especially at the end there. So the Wukong is an interesting one. You're not as good as skirmishing early, especially since the recent nerfs that came through for this champion. So you got to be really careful when you're running into Elise in the jungle. And I think the mid lane pick is going to be very crucial here. And maybe that's why they're saving it to the end. You need something that can skirmish. You need something that's going to be able to help get prio and also allow shaden to be a little more aggressive and oh my god is it tristana mid oh, is it, it tristana for shochi it could be and then with the azir now i mean it, i guess it depends on what cincinnati want to throw in the yeah. azir's way uh mm -hmm. if they think that uh seraphine can i mean because seraphine should just be able to handshake the laning phase yeah. with the azir but if they want a little bit more guaranteed priority, especially early on in the levels where Trisana is lethal, yeah. uh, they might just be throwing Manui, the Seraphine, scale alongside the Ash in the bottom side of the map. And now it's Looks all like about it. looking to force early pressure off of the Tristana push, move into the jungle with Parry on the Elise. I mean, we talked about how are Parry and Faisal going to, you know, look for a statement win against Evil Genius's challengers? Well, you put Shochi on someone that can give you the damn prio so you can move in and, you know, give Shaden a nasty surprise from the bush. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a na it might be a nasty surprise for Rioma. Worth noting, he's played a good bit of Tristana mid in the time I've seen him play as well. So you got to imagine he is familiar with this matchup. But yes, you're going to have that early push. You're going to have that early lethal threat like you talked about. And this mid jungle duo, we talk about skirmishing power and they have it in spades, Mark. And it is confirmed Tristana mid for Shochi. A blast from the past. Press the attack. Runes on deck as well. Not necessarily the Hail of Blades for the just quick uh, explosive expecting. burst trade, but I mean, press the attack will always do fine no matter what stage of the game you have that damage amplification. Yeah. And I think it just solidifies that. Hang on. 
Oh, oh no, oh. it's a bait! It's a bait! Manui lured Smoothie and Mobility You're in! They thought they me. had the jump on them! And look who gets a double no kill way. on top no of it! No way! It's Shochi! That's the way you start out the game for Cincinnati Fear! You gotta give a lot of credit to Fear. That's scouting right there, Mark. They knew! They knew exactly what was going down here at level 1 for the bot lane of Evil Geniuses. And I think chat's already on to what's probably going to happen, at least in game one. You can see it overwhelmingly in favor of Cincinnati Fear. And if you have the same opinion or a different one, why don't you spam either Fear or EGC in the chat. Tell us who you think is going to win the game. I but mean, a 2-0 Tristana going into lane. Mark, I'm tilted if I'm real. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I could pull Joshi right now, who's in my living room and just watching the game. And I, he's played a ton of Tristana mid. If you have that kind of lead, I'm pretty sure you just have full control of this mid lane. And he's gone for the coals, so it's in a boots. So he has a little bit more freedom to move in and out and quickly. And also do the this. level two. Yeah. And I think I like the purchase. Like overall, you you are gonna have this pressure no matter what in this matchup. So you spend it on boots, you spend it on the call to allow you to scale a little bit harder, get that extra bit of gold, which I like the decision. From Shochi, and we're already gonna see, like you said, it makes it a little easier to move around the map, get out of lane, place wards in the enemy Raptors camp. And to make matters worse, you have this bot lane which excels in poke. Seraphine, a champion we see very little of, despite her, I'm gonna say it, obvious power mark in yeah. several positions. So seeing that one come through from fear, I think is a really nice thing. The big what a big challenge for Evil Geniuses to now have to deal with a decently fed Tristana who just picked up first blood, a double kill on top of it. I mean, and for Ryoma, he finally comes back after all the Visa issues and he first stage game here in Challengers and he's got to go against the 2 0 Tristana in lane. I mean, like, that's almost like a solo queue moment where you're just like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> this laning phase is going to be fun. But Shaden. Gonna make a move happen on to Faisal on the top side, who's slightly no overextended. Flash. No flash, it's just a ghost setup. So he pops the ghost immediately. Soul can't get in range, not gonna look to. Actually, he's also running teleporting knights, so <laughs> he, could, he could not get in range. Barry's gonna look for Aoma, but just a repel, cruising on through the mid lane. Right, just to. Keep the pressure up. You want to grab that scuttle crab? This is an opportunity for Barry, I think, to actually go for double crab. You know, Shaden's probably at his. Either first gro uh, first Krog camp or the respawn. So it's an opportunity for Perry to just continue getting a little bit of an advantage and just overall allow him to continue, or not continue, but start to perpetuate a bit of a gold lead here. He's able to steal camps, double scuttle, finish farming his own camps. There isn't much for Shaden to do on the map and it feels bad. So he's just going to go ahead and gank top again. Repeat, you know, and you already know that you have the summoner advantage this time around and Shaden... Has the lockdown from Soul from the permafrost. Faisal's gonna do everything to clear out the minion wave, but this is how you bounce back as Evil Genius's challenger shade and playing to his strength, setting up from Soul. That's right, and hopefully oh Okay. So already seeing we're continuing to see this pressure from Shoji in this matchup, and overall Perry making sure this wave gets in, and also there's a dive. Alright, Perry looks for the cocoon. Blends oh, from ability, okay. but oh, fear. They do such a great job of juggling the turret aggro. It's a flash committed from Trevor to dodge out on the last one. Same with Perry, but they get the dive down. Huge wave lost by mobility. It's only smooth that gets to soak it up. They get the cleanse out too. This is another opportunity, much like what we just saw to come through. And oh, okay, it's fine. Um, yeah, no cleanse for mobility. Means you can kind of do that again, and next time you'll have to flash. So this pressure on the bottom side, this Elise being able to get a lot of these early plays going is exactly what you want here, Cincinnati Fear. And you're gonna see, like, exactly what yeah. just happened. The patience is really nice. Smiting the Heimerdinger turret as well. That smoothie place to make, to try and absorb the expected cocoon. So it ends up working out. You have to use both flashes as Trevor and Perry, but ultimately you're denying gold and XP from this virus. You're pulling him behind. It's a worthy trade. And it's awesome to see Perry make solid early game plans 
because one of the things oh, that yes. we expected from uh, Perry after his time in Dignitas Challengers, he was someone that was a little bit more raw, subbing in while XU filled in for the LCS squad and the starting position uh, towards the back end of summer. Right. Perry was drafted a lot the Volibear because Dignitas wanted to give Perry a champion that is like, hey, you got a point and clicks done. We can call for you after you do three camps and we're just going to make plans and we're going to force you to just dive turrets with us or make ganks happen. Because now in a team on fear, I'm not sure what the, the, the leadership or the, the shock calling structure is like, but I imagine it's a lot less hand-holding than Perry had in Dignitas Challengers. I think so as well, and he specifically even expressed that he wanted to be more of an aggressive jungler in the early game, be able to make those plays. And Elise is definitely not a champion I ever considered to be a parry champion, but so far, it's looking pretty good. And all that early pressure from level one until now is going to allow them to get dragon number one and get stacking towards a dragon soul mark. Cincinnati fear off to a very strong start. Yeah, this is everything since the early scouting of the bot lane setup. Shochi not necessarily accruing a CS lead over Ryoma. Ryoma's been doing a pretty damn good job of not having to burn summoner spells, or at least in terms of flash, not dying to ganks from parry. No threat from Shochi whatsoever. So it's just the pole is just allowing Shochi to accrue a slight gold lead. But I mean, Ryoma is holding his own. First day back here on North American soil, and he is doing a okay. Right, keeping up in CS, and it's all you can hope for. Ryoma, even if he's behind kills because of what Shochi did, he's still going to be able to have a lot of impact as he scales up the Emperor's Divide, which is now available. He's going to be able to offer a lot of playmaking for Evil Geniuses overall. And that's something that Evil Geniuses will be able to rely on as time goes on. So it's really more about what Fear are going to be able to do to push this lead. And these roam timers are exactly what I'm talking about. You move your bot lane out. Instead of recalling, you just move straight to the mid lane, move upwards so that you give Perry that space. Oh, oh my God. I love that from Manui. As soon as he sees a monkey in his sights, he's like, I'm going to get him. Immediately, Encore Flash forces Shade into Flash, but he still has Cyclone to play with. He would just have to use his clone to walk CC on here. in. A lot of CC is available, as you called it. Soul has Glacial Prison, throws it. It's just an it AoE slow. It doesn't hit anyone for the stun, but Chain of Corruption from Mobility connects on a Faisal. That's one member gone. Whoa! Oh my the damage God! out of nowhere. Shoji's gunning. The reset's going. He's hopping and he's skipping. But nicely done for Rayo. It pushes it back, but Shoji flashes over the Emperor's Divide. He's got one more Hello. reset. Cincinnati Fear! They're putting the fear into evil geniuses. My God! This day is just delivering. And it's 5-0 and oh for Shochi in the mid lane. And that's 8-2 to two kills overall. Cincinnati Fear get everything they want in this game, Mark. And they've gotten themselves a monumental lead. And we're going to see it right here. As soon as the Glacial Prison goes wide, you have this opportunity. Especially with that strike coming through from Faisal. CC coming through. A lot of key ultimates invested and that's the opportunity. Shaden can't steal the Herald. Uses the Cyclone and his clone. So Shoji is here and ready to do damage and it's just jump after jump after jump. The way that Shoji timed the explosive bomb to explode in conjunction with the Buster Shot pushing yes. the main front line into everyone. Just massive AoE damage, and Shochi lives on top of it. God. Triumph. I mean, Pete, when we think about all of the, the surprises that we saw today, even after the last series, like, okay, I mean, this is... Going into this next series, things are going to go back to expectations, right? We're not going <laughs> to... Literally, we said that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, literally... Literally fear now. Even stepping up and answering the call of what happens when a provisional team takes on a challenger team. And not just any challenger team. This is Evil Geniuses, the team with Shaden, who has just been an absolute rock star, destroying teams and almost solo carrying games by himself. But yeah. just a, an incredible game plan that Fear have come out with, and they're executing it beautifully. Yes, the planning has definitely been immaculate from Cincinnati Fear, and it's just culminating in what we're seeing here. Oh, but Ryoma has something to say about Shochi overstepping his welcome. The Buster Shot forces him away, but there's no flash on Tristana if Shaden can get it in range, but he doesn't have flash either, so yeah, he would have to cover some distance. Shochi going to get out alive. 
Yeah, at this point, you have Faisal moving in to protect him as well. Oh, unless... He's really hunting for it. Enchanted Crystal Arrow hits on to Ryoma. No flash available on the Azir. The Cocoon from Perry connects. Oh, good God. It's, it's terrible. It's tragedy for evil geniuses, but fear continue prospering on the Rift. And now it's Perry. He's 1-0 oh, and 6, by the way. Just gets solo first brick gold. This Elise has become terrifying. This team has become terrifying here in game one, Mark. Easily going to be able to pick up this next dragon. And these gold leads are insane. One thing I didn't even get to talk about, Shoji has Gale Force. And when I say, you might be thinking, oh, beat down, that's not a big deal. Like, it's the first mythic. Everybody gets mythics. He's had it for more than a minute and a half. So he either got it at 10 minutes or just before it, before he even finished his call, Mark. You understand me? Yes, I understand you loud and clear. This guy cashing in, especially when he finally gets to sell the coal on the recall as well. I, observers, we need we need the Please. gold. We need the to see the gold. If for, yes, thank you. Oh, oh, Holy, oh, that's oh my a, god! That is a thirty-five hundred gold differential in the mid lane. I mean, Shochi benefiting massively off of the triple kill and the massive fight that we saw on the top side. But this Tristana is fed out of her mind. Fed doesn't even begin to describe it. Shochi has gorged himself off the corpses of the members of Evil Genius Challengers. He's Sheesh. five and oh, he's getting towards that. What looks like a bloodthirster is just an insane, insane, just miles ahead here. And the thing too is that it's very difficult to get on top of Tristana. Shoji, of course, has had to blow flash recently, but we'll get it back soon. That rocket jump, which you can use to buffer against most, if not a most CC in the game means that Shochi is going to be very hard to punish. And that's why it's going to take an insane commitment like what we're seeing on the screen. Oh, if Shochi isn't careful. Oh, never mind. It's EG who has to be careful. Mm. And Shochi was contemplating. Oh, there's someone here. Oh, mm, that's a Sejuani. I don't know if I... Oh, 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 oh. He doesn't have flash. Glacial Prison connects. Ryo and Smoothie are there. And oh. just like that beat... And Shoji had this massive shutdown bounty. You had to have known that evil geniuses were going to put a target on you and just not respecting who could have been in the bush. No flash available. And that's massive for evil geniuses. It is, but Mark, I'm going to be honest. I mean, it's okay because Smoothie is building AP, but that's not who you want that kind of shutdown on. I was hoping someone else would be able to pick it up. But it is still a big deal. You get Shochi off of the map. Remove his bounty. But he has a lot of gold to spend. So this is still not the worst thing in the world. Fear is still 7,000 gold up. Turret places just fell, by the way. And objective bounties are already coming up. Yeah. I no, I would agree. But we yeah. have we have Mr. Kangas on deck, who is a huge Heimerdinger. Fixionado. Oh, that's true. I think he would be truly offended if you just said, yeah, it's not worth to get the shutdown on Heimerdinger of all champions. Come oh. On. Oh? <laughs> Kangas in our ear saying, how dare you, as Shaden looks for the play. And now Fear, even though the mission shutdown did occur and Shochi gave up the death, they're still far ahead of Evil Genius. Miles. They're miles ahead. A solid 7,000 gold lead. Even the game... Throwing up the objective bounties, the pity prizes. It's like, evil geniuses, you need some help. Here, if you claim some turrets, we will give you extra gold as compensation. All right, Mark. May I, can I invite you to join me in what I like to call the copium corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love the copium corner. Great. So here at the copium corner. Oh, wait a minute. Cocoon connects. Oh, <laughs> They had no idea. It was all an assumption. They made the read. They said, I think we saw them probably recalling in here and they just throw out everything. Oh my God, fear. Beautiful. I, I'm not even sure if I can morally bring you into the Copium Corner anymore, Mark. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, Wait, was the Copium Corner for evil geniuses? It was. Okay, mm. we'll, we'll do it anyway. We're already here, you know? So... 
Oh man, I don't even remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the play itself that play caught me you too, off man. guard. You know what? It's it's completely understandable. I mean, oh, oh, okay. I remember. I remember. I remember. Okay, All right, okay. copium time. The thing with the pretty, uh, the the pity prizes, as you so wonderfully call them, Mark, is that. It, there's a lot of structures at this point of the game for evil geniuses to pick up. So they're in a position where if they get a lot of these outer towers, because literally every tower is up for fear, that's a lot of gold on top of the bounties that they can get back into their pockets. So that's kind of what I'm looking at as their way into this game. Seeing, doing what we see them doing on the screen, trying to make an all-in play and catch someone out, and using that pressure, that map freedom you buy yourself to be able to start knocking down structures. Sure. Big problem is that they have to get vision control in order to set up those picks and plays, right? And yeah, I mean it's it's not like the vision control was completely in fear's control, which is why they were playing within their range, playing in with their boundaries where they had fog of war, you know, not shrouding. They were within the line of sights where they had vision control, and evil genius is not, you know, knowing that they cannot fully contest and face check into Elise, Seraphine, and Ash. Okay, but this is the pick. This is how you do it as Evil Genius's challengers. You look for a face check on any of the members, but for fear, they are not going down. Not enough damage in the tank for the side of Evil Genius's challengers, but maybe oh. Shaden can look for the Cyclone. They look for it. Ryoma three-man scoop! Big scoop! Holy kamoli, Ryoma, that was huge! He still goes down for his efforts, but Evil Genius's are not going down without a fight. They just picked up three kills! Three for two, Mark, on top of shutdowns to boot. Evil geniuses. That's a big win for them off a huge play from their new mid laner, Ryoma. Being able to make that happen there, get a lot of gold back into their pockets. They're starting to narrow this gold lead a little bit. But isn't it... This is a struggle of inches for them here. And we're going to see the replay, the bush play coming through here from a few members of Evil geniuses. You're going to see it. Glacial Prison, but the shield from the Bloodthirster and the lack of burst damage is what allowed Shoji I mean, to be able to walk away from this one. And even though they get soul in the process, look at the minimap. You see Shaden come through here. We talked about in Champ Select the kind of CC they offer in team fights, and he perfectly used the W outside of their vision, so they weren't ready to react. It's just yeah. a perfect alley oop from this jungle mid combination of Shaden Rayoma. There's still a mountain of gold to climb if you are evil geniuses, but it's not looking... Or, I mean, it, it goes to show that they can make moves, that they can play off of the tools that they have, and they just all in, and they commit, because they know that there's no other choice. There's no point in really half committing to a play when you're already this far behind. You have to give everything. You have to invest all the resources you have to just swing gold back into your favor. There's... For fear, momentum is still on their side. Three dragons to none. One more dragon, that's soul. And then evil geniuses challengers will have to fight through pretty much everything to stay alive. And they're struggling even still to stay alive at this moment, Mark. Because you can see it. Turrets being knocked down systematically by Cincinnati Fear. They're just using all everything they have. Teleports, making sure that... These waves are pushed in so deeply onto Evil Genius's side of the map. It limits their opportunities to be able to make plays because it's harder for them to set up vision. But you can see it. They're trying to do that. They're trying to clear things out. Oh, Banui finds Smoothie. Oh, nicely done from Ryoma. Block Shochi from being able to hop over the wall with the Embers Divide, but Faisal has a great flank angle. Ryoma gets oh. out. Can't say the same about Shaden. Forced to flash over the wall so that the all-out doesn't take him directly into Fear's hands. Speaking of Fierce Hands, look at the timer. It's looking like a Baron has just fallen right into it. You get Smoothie out of the picture. You get the ult and flash out of Shaden out of the picture. Means it's a very easy Baron secure. Shaden technically has Smite. They're here. They can try oh, to stop it. This yeah, would yeah. be a big play. But Perry has found a... Wait, how did Perry get over there? He found the flank onto Shaden. And he looks for the repel. He's able to just jump over to Soul, who is on the other side, and isolated from the rest of the members of Evil Geniuses. But Perry's getting taken down. Ignite burns him. He's forced to retreat. The rest of Fear don't get the follow up on the play of for the Baron. Yeah, it's a big stop from EGC. They slow things down a little bit. They buy themselves time. 
And I, I too would like to know how Perry got to the position he was in, but not only did he live, he helped his team walk out of this one. Now, oh, Smoothie. Oh, Smoothie. Oh, never mind. He's good. Hmm. <laughs> if you're Ryoma, you're just like, oh, look at that. An Ash arrow. Well, yeah. good thing I didn't step forward on that one. Oh, Perry's just exactly. waiting. Perry's just waiting. I don't think it can blow up even Shade him because no. he has the Hex Drinker. I mean, if he finds find Smoothie, uh, that's a whole yeah, different, different conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoothie's a little more squishy on the Heimerdinger. Right, and I mean, taking stock of the map, Evil Geniuses still find themselves in the same difficult position. They're down 10k. Their jungle, I mean, it's not even right to call it their jungle at this point. This Baron can be started up again, even though they managed to stop the previous one. You're seeing it. Teleports come through. Evil Geniuses know something is happening. Big thing. All their ultimates are up. I mean, if they were going to make a play, it's going to be here, Mark. Yep. Fear. 4,000 HP on the Baron. Evil Geniuses, they find Vision in the Baron pit. Shade and goes for no it. No way! Oh, mobility steals it with the piercing arrow. Now, Evil Geniuses, you just have to cut and run. You have to get out and you have to salvage as many Baron buffs as possible. But man, oh man, Evil Geniuses pull out a Baron steal for a miracle. And it wasn't even shaded. It was mobility to boot, channeling his inner Gumayushi. And it's the... It's what you needed. You can see Ryoma, he's doing his best, trying to barren up these minions to limit what fear take, but this is still something. You get some gold into your pockets and you get an opportunity. If you get another pick like that, you will be able to take some of these structures because it's worth noting, fear haven't lost a turret yet, but looking at this fight again, they have the information. The pink ward is there, fear, make the call to burst as they throw out the ash arrow. So Shaden immediately goes into the pick, but it's the piercing arrow that steals it. And Shaden, of course, he's, you sacrifice your life when you Wait. Make play like this without flash, but okay, what, what is it, Mark? Uh, I mean, when I looked back at that replay, was yeah. it Arcane Comet that stole it? Oh my God, that's, I mean, if we got a sec, I would love to see that again. Cause yeah, because be I, I was watching it back and I didn't see, I don't know if I'm just, I mean, I wear glasses for a reason. And even Same. then, sometimes like, we don't see clearly in the moment, but I don't I don't recall seeing a piercing. I, I don't know. I'll, after the game, we'd love to go back and see if it was actually the Arcane Comet that stole it, because that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No? Oh, oh, okay. We're getting the confirmation it was not Comet. Uh, it, it still was the arrow? Okay, okay. We're just making, we're making <laughs> it up. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All right, Chain of Corruptions. Oh, boy! Oh! Huge Encore from Anui! And that opens up the door for Shoji to just get reset right on over. Faisal with another brilliant flank from the right side. Evil Geniuses are cut down to side. Shoji's getting the resets. He's Goomba stomping everyone. Cincinnati Fear. Get the ace on the Evil Geniuses and surely will push in for the win. We got 30 second timers on almost everybody on Evil Geniuses. Fear will shatter our expectations once again, it looks like, as they're knocking on the base's doors. At least the inhibitor is going down, but with timers like these, they can take it all. It's surely with the Trasan on their side as well. Oh, who, who is sidestepping to the right side? Someone was like, okay, do we just take inhibitors, right? It's like, no, go for the end, go for the end. Yeah. You have everything in your sights. Cincinnati fear, unexpected, but damn right cool for such a nice game one win. You know what? Hang on. That ending could have been said better. I was just caught off guard by Cincinnati fear. By this entire situation? I, I mean, by this whole day. I mean, we're just getting yeah. upset after upset after upset. You know, the, the expectations we are setting for the expected favorites of the teams to, to win in these matches. But, you know, Cincinnati fear just adding on to the list of this is what happens when you have incredible scouting for an early game plan you execute and then you just you flip for the fight that should be going in your favor oh um, what else is there to say when it works it works marks really honestly good scouting because once we saw that lead come through that two and oh for shochi i it just it just it was all downhill from there it was just basically this giant snowball that started at minute one they're styling on them. Cincinnati Fear, downright styling on them. That's the word I was looking for. And with that, that's game one going over to Cincinnati Fear. But we're going to be taking a short break. It'll be our last halftime show when we come back with Kanga, so make sure you stick around.